Today I'm going to give you 10 good thoughts, analysis if you will, about the college football playoffs initial rankings and all that's coming up after the bumper. What do you mean oh. you don't subscribe to my son's YouTube channel? Mama, no! Just snap the damn ball, RJ! What's up, kin folks? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Considering the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. So it's OU related, college football related, sports related. We have a good time. And today, I'm going to give you 10 really good thoughts about the college football playoff rankings as it relates to Oklahoma and, of course, college football in general. But first, I got this book out. It's called Let It Bang. It's available wherever books are sold. I really want you to buy it. I'm working on trying to figure out how to basically mass autograph as many of these as possible. We might set up some meets here in Norman and in Tulsa. When I know something, you'll know something. All right, so my first thought about the college football playoff rankings is that Iowa State at number 24 is extremely helpful to Oklahoma. Number one, it's four and three, but we all know that Cyclones ain't no easy win, and it seems like the selection committee is paying attention to what kind of football not just the Big 12 is playing, but what the middle teams are doing, and teams like Iowa State, who are able to go into places and get Ws where they haven't traditionally been able to do that, are being told, hey, you play a tough schedule, that Iowa team that you took an L2 early in the year, it's pretty good. And for the Cyclones to be a ranked ahead of a 7-1 Fresno State that has pretty much the second best defense in college football this year, I think that's helpful to Oklahoma. And I think if the Cyclones get another W against Texas, yeah, we're sitting pretty. But I'm going to get into that a little bit later. I thought Texas at number 17, 6-2, I could take it or leave it there. I think the Iowa team is ranked right ahead of them at number 16. Actually makes for a pretty good football game. But I also think that Iowa would pile drive Texas because they play physical. They keep the ball away. It's a lot like what Kansas State does, except better. And we saw how close Kansas State was to peeling Texas' cap in Manhattan. If it's a bowl game, and I'm not saying that it would be, That'd be a really cool matchup. I'd like to see this Iowa team versus that Texas team. That said, you know where Texas is going to be. I think the ceiling for them at this point is a top 10 ranking, and that's only if they win out. And if they win out, ugh. I thought West Virginia at number 13 and Florida at number 11 is particularly interesting because they sandwiched UCF. Central Florida was put on blast by the man Joel Klatt earlier this week when he just basically said, yo, you play in FCS schedule. He compared UCF to North Dakota State, to which I say UCF would probably give North Dakota State a run for its money in the FCS playoffs for that national title. But we all get it. And, you know, the committee's woke to it as well, which I really appreciate it. They said, look, they're the only team in these rankings that has not played a team with a winning record in nine weeks. Really hard to take them seriously, even though they're undefeated. But they are undefeated. So they deserve to be in this ranking. They deserve to be inside the top 15. But the message is being sent to Central Florida. Okay, last year, cool. We didn't let you in, but we felt like we shouldn't let you in. This year, you're kind of proving our point of saying, just because you go undefeated doesn't mean that you should get into the upper echelon of the rankings. We want to see you play people. We obviously think that there are conferences that are better than others, and I'll get to that in a minute. But the thing that Central Florida can do for itself right now is just change conferences. Because loading up your non-conference schedule could help you. Yeah, sure. You could go and you could schedule Auburn. You could schedule Texas A&M. You could schedule Washington. And then you'd play an American schedule for which everybody would be like, eh, it's a group of five championship. We don't really value it like we do these other championships. And if Central Florida continues to go down this path, I don't see why they wouldn't be able to compete in a place like the ACC, which would be a natural fit for them being in Florida with Miami, with Florida State, with Clemson and South Carolina, with North Carolina. I think that's just cool. And I would be all for it. And yo, UCF, for once you'd be able to take an L, and probably still have a case to make it in the college football playoff instead of having to tell everybody, yo, we won nearly 20 straight. Can we get some respect? Nah, that ain't how this works. That ain't how this works. You get respect by playing big boy teams in big boy conferences. Central Florida at number 12. Okay, sure. We'll leave it there. I also think that West Virginia is looking at Central Florida and going, we're better than them. I know we got a loss to Iowa State, but my goodness, did you see what we did to Tennessee? We dropped 40 on them. We dropped 40 on an SEC team. Yeah, we know. And you'd probably be inside the top 10 if you didn't take that L to the number 24 team in the country. While Florida's looking over his shoulder saying, please, 
Please let us have these chumps in a bowl game. Have you seen our defensive line and our linebackers? We will run straight over and through McKenzie Milton and Josh Heupel's offense. However, the way it's looking, Florida ain't going to get that opportunity. They had a shot, and then they took an L to Georgia. Ohio State at 10, Kentucky at 9, and Washington State at 8 is surprising to me. I thought that this committee would give a lot more weight to an Urban Meyer Buckeyes team and a lot more weight to an SEC team, quite frankly. But they've decided that the Pac-12 leader is actually pretty good. And you can see that because they basically played the same non-conference kind of schedule that these ranked SEC teams played. However, Pac-12 dumps fire. We know that. Oregon taking an L to Arizona did not help. USC not being USC, Washington being a ghost. It, 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 you could argue that, yeah, they got parity because top and bottom can beat each other, but that ain't what you really want to see. You want to see dominance, and you want to see dominant displays on the field. That said, Gardner Minshew is a low-key Heisman finalist, and I think you'll get an invite to the ceremony, if nothing else, that will be decided between Tua and Kyler, but he deserves to be there. But I also think that Washington State is looking at the teams in front of it and going, oh yeah, yeah, y'all are going to eat each other up. We're going to win a Pac-12 championship and we're really going to mess this up for somebody. Mike Leach is probably folding his arms going, yeah, okay, we got this. This is fine. This is where we want to be. Which leads me to the team in front of Washington State. That'd be my Oklahoma Sooners, our Oklahoma Sooners. If you're watching the channel and it's not your Oklahoma Sooners, I'm assuming you want to know a lot about this too, which is to say... We're okay. We're sitting pretty. There are three SEC teams ranked ahead of Oklahoma. At least one of them is guaranteed to catch an L on Saturday, whether it be Alabama or LSU. But you can also look at Kentucky and say, you could see them beating Georgia, who's ranked ahead of Oklahoma as well. So I'm not worried about it on that front. Oklahoma, all you have to do is continue to do what you've done for the last three years in November, which is just go undefeated because semifinal spots are won in November. On this day last year, Oklahoma was out. Notre Dame was in. We know how this works. We know how to do this. However, as cool as it is to see the SEC teams beat up on each other, there's a roadmap here to get two SEC teams into the playoff again. I'm going to get to that in a little bit. But let's skip past Georgia and go to Michigan. All right. Michigan has the clearest road of anybody outside of the top four to get into the top four. All right. No matter how you feel about Penn State, the playoff committee thinks it's the number 14 team in the country. So now you got number 5 versus 14. I think Michigan can win that game by two touchdowns. And then later if they beat Ohio State and they win a Big Ten championship, their resume screams we're better than Oklahoma. Because the only loss they would have taken is to an undefeated Notre Dame team at the present. So best case scenario there is Oklahoma wins out and Michigan flinches. Whether it be against Penn State or Ohio State or in a Big Ten championship game. However, again, move to number four, you'll get to Notre Dame. It's kind of cool to see the selection committee doesn't believe in Notre Dame either. I thought that they might put this team as high as two based on pedigree and them being the Golden Domers and getting that win over Michigan. But that's clearly not the case. An 8-0 Notre Dame team doesn't have any room to slip they don't play a conference championship the rest of their schedule is rather weak and they're playing a northwestern team this weekend that has proven it can win northwestern has beaten wisconsin and the same purdue team that literally ran over the ohio state buckeyes northwestern beat them too and the reason i think that this is a thing that could happen is northwestern can stop the run they did this against wisconsin which is one of the best running football teams in football let alone college and notre dame just can't afford to slip it has to win out and it has to be on everybody's mind when everyone is playing a conference championship and it does not lsu at number three that could end up being the proverbial poop in the punch bowl, all right? Because if LSU beats Alabama, Alabama's a one-loss team, and the precedent has been set that a one-loss SEC team against a pretty stout schedule, like the one that Alabama faces, like the one that LSU faces, gets the nod ahead of an undefeated Notre Dame, which is the committee telling you, we think that the SEC is the strongest conference in football and we're going to treat it as such. So you could easily see a close loss to LSU for Alabama just means that Clemson jumps ahead of them to one 
and Alabama still at two. And because everybody believes in this Alabama team so much, it's easy to see that team still get considered, even if it doesn't manage to make it to its conference championship game again or win its division, make it into college football playoff, because that committee has demonstrated in the past it doesn't care about records, it doesn't care about championships, it cares what it thinks are the best four teams in college football and making them play each other. And we all agree here, Alabama is one of the four best teams in football unless they take three losses. Now, this also goes the other way for LSU because LSU plays one of the strongest schedules in all of football. So if LSU has two losses and Alabama slips up and catches two losses themselves, you could see another scenario for which the selection committee says, yeah, okay, we'll put these two teams in because they beat up on each other and they took L's each other and they basically have been unstoppable save these other two things. The top-ranked undefeated team is an SEC team. The top-ranked one-loss team is an SEC team. The top ranked two loss team is an SEC team. The top ranked three loss team is an SEC team. The committee is telling you we believe the best football in America is played in the SEC and that's how we're going to make our rankings. That said, Clemson would be the number one team and then we're talking about whether or not Notre Dame finished undefeated or Michigan won its Big Ten championship or Oklahoma has vaulted ahead of all of these teams. There's a lot of moving and shaking to be done, but there are two crucial questions for college football fans, which is how is the selection committee going to treat an Alabama team that suffers a close loss to LSU? And two, is the SEC title game going to carry any weight at all? Because if you don't get two of these teams inside the top six in that SEC title game, then you're going to have to really come up with your argument for why you need to get two in. But if two of the teams that are in this top six are in the SEC title game, man, it's really hard to see them not doing what they did last year unless Notre Dame wins out, Clemson wins out, Michigan, Oklahoma do what they do. But for Oklahoma fans, it's this simple. You got to beat Tech on Saturday. You have to go undefeated in November, and you got to hope Michigan flinches. I think that was 10 thoughts. Pretty sure that was 10 thoughts. Maybe it was more thoughts. I swear I had written down 10 thoughts, and then I just started rolling, so I, I, I think I hit it. All right, that's it for me. Deuces.